Welcome to the This Could Make Us Famous podcast. You've heard all the stories of the rich and famous. But what about everybody else? Some of the greatest and funniest stories come from everyday people. Here, we share their stories and just maybe make them famous. Let's get started. Here is your host, Jason McCormick. Welcome back to the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Jason McCormick. Uh, with me today is this beautiful guy here, Justin Ocean. He said beautiful. <laughs> you are very beautiful. People keep saying that. Yeah, Aww. and then that's my beautiful wife, hey. lovely bride, lovely bride, Emily McCormick. He's only this Welcome. nice to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm gonna change that effect okay, next though. time. That's all right. So yes, she is in Charlie's chair. I, um, I couldn't get a hold of Charlie tonight. He tried to call me today. Uh, to see if we're doing a show, and then when I texted him, he didn't answer. So I'm like, the show must go on, and it is going on. Am I sparkly like Charlie? Charlie, sparkles? you are sparkling. Sparkly a little bit. eyes. Do I twinkle? Mm. You see the blue lights? Am I twinkling? You are you are twinkling very Yay. much. <laughs> Twinkle. So what's going on, Justin? What is going on? How are you doing? I know last time we talked, you your car <sighs> was done for. I'm sorry, I brought up a sensitive. He's still carless. We just got a car, brand Dang. new Kia Forte. Way to put his stuff out there, Jason. Hey, Jeez. We were just going through the same thing. Uh-huh. Well, the Lambo. Oh, you just have a Lambo, our Bugatti, <laughs> and our fighter jet that we had. Yeah, oh, we actually had a whatever. Fighter. Several Lambos. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so we just got a Kia Forte 2020. We've never owned a brand new vehicle ever mm-hmm. in our lives for the reasons of mm-hmm. it being too expensive. Mm-hmm. Like way too expensive. And when you drive the car mm-hmm. off the lot, it loses so much of its like value. Like thousands of now dollars. you've learned. Yeah, I mean, I already knew that from the get-go. However, we were in a situation where we kind of had to um, because we still owed on the car that was totaled because the second engine blew on it. The and, second uh, the engine second. on a Chevy yeah. Cruise. Uh, I don't the most people second it. engine. Most people don't have one engine that blows. Yeah, we had, our, two. We had two engines that blew. And uh, so we decided, you know what, we're gonna we're just going to do this thing. So we got a new car. And uh, it's a nice car, but I will say this. Um, it's a car. I, yeah, it is a car. It is and, a car. And uh, we owe a lot on it now. It's but way to keep putting our stuff out there, by the way. Jeez. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, we were upside down. We had to roll everything over. To get I didn't say vehicle. we were upside down. <laughs> I said we're we still owe. We still to get a, new, a used vehicle, so we had no choice but to get the new hey. vehicle. Jeez. <laughs> hey, I didn't say we were upside down. You just said that. Tell them what's I in said our we bank owed. account. Gosh. Anyway, so we're having a Should marriage fight right now. Let's see. Uh, what do number, we got? The bank account numbers are. How about? <laughs> so, uh, one, shut, would, up, shut up. Oh, that's, that's that's all right. So, uh, one million. Yeah. <laughs> one million. <laughs> so, million. you guys are crazy. So, anyways, what I was disappointed about uh, with this whole experience with getting a new car, I don't really like dealerships because they work you. You know, they try to pull all their little sales tactics on you. It's their job. And um, <laughs> they do it well. Yeah, they do it dang well. Um, we actually watched a video of a guy that did finances for a dealership and he explained how they play with your emotions. They want you they mm-hmm. want you to push back. They want you to feel like you beat them mm-hmm. because they win. So they make it hard to put a lot of pressure. And then um, whenever you barely get your way, they make it make you feel like you beat them at their own game, and then you you walk away feeling like a winner. Yeah. And instead, they're like, <laughs> suckers. Or they take credit for everything. Like, they pretend like they got you a really good deal. Like, yeah, man, I totally took credit for that. You know, yeah. like, I totally did you guys a favor. Like, no, you didn't. Like, our credit did us a favor. Like, a co-signer did us a favor. You did crunch some numbers. You didn't do us anything. But go ahead and take all the credit for everybody else's hard work. This is what happens. In the <laughs> oh, my those. God. Sorry. You just uh, gave me the look. Hey, yeah. one second. I just want to point out the lava lamp is lava lamping. 
You're starting to lava lamp. All right, all right, Charlie. What? Let's call Charlie. <laughs> you know, you know who doesn't have. Problems. I'm never gonna be allowed to come out again. What? what? You know who who doesn't need a co-signer for a new car though? Our NFL athletes. What do we have about them this hour? Well, I was gonna say something <laughs> about the the Kia and about our experience, but anyways, uh, yeah, we were gonna talk about the NFL, and uh, as everyone knows, the season has kicked off, and I believe weren't the Chiefs the first. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so the the <laughs> Houston Texans and yep. the Kansas City Chiefs, which we're from I Kansas City, so we love the Chiefs. So the Chiefs won 34 to 20. Yep. And I watched part of like the beginning of the game and Patrick Mahomes is an amazing quarterback. I love it, but mm-hmm. it was hard to get around the, the beginning. I mean, everybody out there And what was it the beginning? Well, Everybody out there was kind of curious on how all the NFL teams were going to kick off the the games, you know, like before, uh, you know, doing the national anthem, who's going to mm. kneel, who's not. Black Lives Matter. Yeah, Black Oops, Lives Matter, that? all that stuff. And there was a black national anthem. And they did it. Yeah. The BLM uh, national anthem. And uh, it, it was just a, it's a really touchy subject, but um there was one person, you have that person that was kneeling. Do you know who he was? The person that was kneeling? There was one person from the Chiefs that kneeled. I actually don't know hmm. who that is. I, I don't know who kneeled, but I know that there was a bunch of like social justice measures. So one of the things that the NFL is now doing is that they are down at the end zone borders. Um, what they are putting uh, on as a phrase at the the end zones is it takes all and end racism and then they're also allowed to put signs at the end of the end zone borders as well and then one thing that the nfl is doing too is the the um the players now have the option to put decals on the back of their helmets and that's supposed to like honor people like george floyd um brennan taylor Ahmad Arby, people like that. And so that's another thing that the NFL is doing. Hmm. Well, um, I'd, I'd probably put an X-Men decal in the back of mine. X-Men. X-Men. <laughs> okay. the, ulti- the ultimate racism. I, I don't know what I feel about it. I mean, it's you try to be sensitive to what's going on, but, you know, I'm kind of getting tired of it. I wish they could separate politics from sports and in entertainment. It's like... Why? Why are we doing this? It's so offensive. It's so divisive. And we just want to watch people play f- sports. We don't want to see all the other stuff, the political things going on. The world is already in total chaos. I mean, mm-hmm. everything that's going on, you know, we're talking about the Black Lives Matter stuff. And we got to talk about the riots that, that have been erupting all over our country. And it, everything's just out of control, on even on both sides, honestly. But and now the police are just being targeted. They can't even sit in their patrol cars and patrol without yeah. some thug coming up and busting a cap in their head, you know? Um, you know, funny thing happened uh, on the way to the Chicago victory. The Bears defeated the Detroit Lions like 27 to 24, right? Come from behind, Mitch Trubisky, brilliant. So I was watching this, and in the first quarter, I actually, I watched it for like, the first half and then I just I stopped I gave up because honestly mostly because of all the social justice just stuff that was on commercial after commercial then you look at the you look at the end zone and it's it's on there and it's 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 kind of like yeah you're going too far but the funny thing that happened all right so this Detroit Lion had uh, tackled the Bears running back and for those that you don't know, there's all this helmet hoopla going on where you can't lower your helmet. That's, you know, causing head injuries. And they've changed rules so that running backs literally cannot put their head down when they run, which wow. is almost goes against, like, the fundamental process of all of football. But they've done that. So David Montgomery for the Bears kind of does that a little bit. They don't call it. One of the Detroit Lions goes over to the umpire and puts his helmet down, showing it, and literally headbutts the umpire in the chest. And of course, it's a black athlete and a white umpire. Oh and the, gosh! He headbutts him. The white umpire is kind of like, yeah, does this thing. And I was, I was waiting for that to be the next uh, mm. social justice movement. 
Yeah, I mean, all it takes is one little thing, and then the he, whole world just goes up. He got ejected from the game, and oh, and I'm okay. thinking, no one's arguing about this. This is like taking care of business. Yeah, it's a form of policing. I, it, it, it this is just it's hard to wrap your mind around it. It's hard. Like I was talking to you guys earlier, like when I was watching that video. Um, I was going to play it so you guys can see it, but it's just too disturbing. But there there was a video clip. Some of you probably have already seen it where those the patrol officers were shot in their car in their car. And then there was these thugs that were filming it and they were laughing and you can hear in the background. That's awful. You can hear the officers screaming in agony. They were in pain. They're dying and th- they're being laughed at. And they try to justify that by saying that's what the you know cops do to them, and it's just evil. Evil has erupted all over this earth, and I am just so sad to see all this. I'm so sad that my son, you know, our son has to see the world in in this way, in this light, and um, people are just so against one another. Well, it's not the entire world. I've been told the island of Fiji is safe. Yeah, well, <laughs> for now. <laughs> yeah, Black Lives Matter down in Fiji. I don't know. Are there, are there black people in Fiji? I don't know. I don't know I, what color they are. Everywhere, yeah. Everywhere, okay. So, okay. And, 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 and to be clear, everywhere. like, My I'm dad. not trying to be against, you know, African Americans because we all have plenty of friends that are African American. We love them. We're, we're all African Americans. Yeah, we're all African. We all so, are. But all this political crap. I don't care about that. You know, I care about people when they die. I hate seeing people when they get killed, um, even in police brutality, because that does exist. And I acknowledge that, but it doesn't exist in the measure that would cause Not all of close. this. Like less than 1%. Well, what about criminal brutality? Hmm? Yeah, well, we got, we definitely have criminal brutality out there. And I think the police should protest criminal brutality. I mean, they're not. Acting I'm surprised like police guidelines. officers aren't just handing in their badges all over the place. I Let mean, me tell you, criminals in the 20s, the bank robbers, yeah, sure, they might have shot you, but they would have done it with class. They wouldn't yeah. have heckled you like that. Yeah, they were classy. They were, they were classy. Back then. They just got to the point. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. No, they don't have to say a bunch of stuff. They just shot you. Just yeah. they, <laughs> at least they were shooting in the right direction. The banks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Justin was never asked back. And that was the last episode. Uh, so yeah, we. We uh we don't have all the answers for everything, and like I've said the last podcast, because I got attacked. My first official critic, <laughs> technically, you had like well, one, there was a couple of them. Uh, well, one. two out of whatever how many people watched, the and video. they wanted me to know how uh, basically stupid I was and how I didn't know anything, and I well, need to we, watch YouTube videos. To <laughs> we tried to tell you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's, we're trying I, I'm to not, tell him. I'm, in our little ways, we slipped it in there past the sun. <laughs> I hate, I hate, I hate politics. I hate it, and I don't want to do it, but I keep getting forced into it because it's like Michael that's the Corleone. most freaking relevant thing in the world right now. It's, it's like very relevant, yeah, and um, it it's at the forefront but I can't, of our minds, and we it is something that we do need to talk about because it is something well, that is happening, and it's really polarizing on both sides. And I think it's really important that we address it and we're not quiet about it. Well, and I also don't want to be a coward and I got to stand for what I believe and not be ashamed of it, even though it's going to be extremely offensive. So no matter what side you choose, you're going to offend the opposite, Mm -hmm. you know? So if, even if I became like a liberal Democrat, I'm going to offend everybody in the conservative and be attacked And, you know, me being conservative, I'm going to be attacked by all the liberals that absolutely despise everything that conservatives stand for. And so I just got to pick a side and stick with it. Um, And I I just have to say I'm against all just about everything that liberals stand for and what they're doing in this country, uh, dividing. And I'm not saying that the uh, conservative Republican Party is doing everything right either. Because I am a firm believer that no matter what side you choose Mm -hmm. doesn't mean that they do everything right. So Mm -hmm. if you're a Democrat, you shouldn't just wave away everything that your political party does and just sweep it under the rug. 
um, you know, we should hold all of our leaders accountable, even if we vote for that party. We can't just be like, oh, well, I'm a Republican, so everything they do, they can do no wrong. You know, mm. you know what I'm you know what I'm not against is the genuine Democrat Party, the party of JFK, the one that got taken over like decades ago. If that LBJ. party were still around, I would probably be a Democrat. But mm. it's gotten so completely hijacked uh, that it's the liberal leadership that is it's not just against maybe my political opinions or beliefs it's it's like literally just ungodly the stuff you can't look someone in the eye and say that you know i'm a christian and i can vote for the liberal agenda no it's just it's no it's way at that point how can they sit back and watch the whole country just fall apart and and promote that stuff probably with a beer yeah Damn. Mm. and it, that's what makes me sick i mean i i would imagine Oh wow! And My it makes bad. That was computer. Microsoft sick too. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll turn it down so that when, I'll mute it yeah. for now. No, you're good. I got it turned down. Okay. Cool. So, anyways, um, yeah. So Emily's over there doing Charlie's job. I am. And then one more thing because we are. Ask a woman. We to do were a kind man. of on the topic and of the NFL and their first week mm-hmm. um, being back playing football, <laughs> I do want to point out that Patrick Mahomes, and we're like, we are hardcore Chiefs fans because we are in Kansas City and we love our Chiefs and we love Patrick Mahomes. And by the way, he just got gotcha. engaged to his high school sweetheart. And I think that's just so sweet and so adorable. And there goes his career. Also, I want to point out that Patrick Mahomes is kind of on the social justice movement as well because he recently made a video along with a number of other players to the NFL wanting them to apologize for not letting uh, NFL players peacefully protest. They were like demanding an apology from this video that they made. Mm -hmm. And that video is on Twitter if you guys want to check it out. Okay. Well, not Patrick, man. He's is, like the hero of Kansas City. Is there anyone associated with the NFL in any way, shape, or form now that isn't on the Justice Warrior bandwagon? I mean, it's like the water boy, I think, is probably. Well, it's because it's popular now, but I'll tell you this for dang sure when Colin Kaepernick put his knee down in the ground, none of those other guys had the balls to do the same thing. You know what I mean? Because they were afraid of their that career is true. going down yeah, the drain. That is yeah. true. And then, you know, so. Even though I don't agree with it, you got to hand it to Colin Kaepernick when it wasn't popular and mm-hmm. it cost him everything. He did it. He stood for what he believed in. And so, you know, even though I disagree with his politics as a man, I, I honor anybody that stands against what's popular for what they believe in, even when they're the only one standing. And so yeah, I give him, you know, credit for that but now all these other people they're only doing it because it's it's now, now relevant now and popular have, you know now they have it's a crowd of people it's become the culture it's well, like here's what i want to point out from the nfl because i think that they did find a peaceful resolution to this so um you know if players do have the right to peacefully protest i really think that we can't take that away from any american in the united states so Like, I just want to applaud the NFL for creating a way to where you can vocalize your political beliefs, but still play the game you're paid to play and not make it this huge political spectacle. So having, you know, the decals on the back of your helmet, I think that's a pretty clever way to peacefully communicate your beliefs without having to take a knee at the national anthem. Yeah, I... There's no excuse for disrespecting the country that you live in. There's no excuse at all. Now you can protest and you can and you know speak about what you want, but let's leave that off the field. I mean, when you're outside, when you're not doing, when you're not on the field playing, you know, share share your beliefs, share what you stand for, like any other human being that's free. But um, we have, you know, the society has demonized police officers, mm-hmm. and. Uh, how many lives have been saved because of an 
uh, an officer like showing up and, and defending you from being killed or, uh, someone that was, you know, a drowned in the water and they, you know, helped yeah. bring him back to life or we, we did the research and at least five were saved. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Try For 5 sure. million probably with throughout our, our lifetime. But yeah. No, there's, you know, there's about, I remember reading there is roughly like 300,000 police officers in the United States. And if you look at the statistics, it's, you know, it's a, literally like a handful of them um, are even accused of the abuse. Yeah. And that's, you got to remember for every time there's one guy, every time there's one guy in Detroit, there's 299,999 police officers that have been up against the wall, usually having people throw stuff in their face and verbally assault them and still remaining calm and not mm. using any force. How many times in a domestic violence situation or almost any halfway heated situation is somebody up in someone else's face and that person never does anything? Oh, did you, did you see, yeah, try, uh, try doing that all day long. That reminds me of that skit that those, uh, two African-American guys do K Keenan or what's his name? Keel. Oh yeah. On comedy. Yeah. Gosh, I can't remember their names, um, but anyways, they do, uh, uh, Saturday night live in their peel. key and peel. Yeah. yeah. They're hilarious, man. But they did one skit where, uh, one of them played a cop and the other one was a criminal. And basically they had committed a crime and they were trying to get away. And the cop pulled the gun on them and said, Hey, freeze. And they're like, don't move. Don't you move. And then the criminal moves and then like, don't you go towards that car? Don't you go? And it goes to the car. Like, don't you touch that door. Uh. Don't you touch the door. And then he touches the door. <laughs> don't you open that door up. Don't you. And then he opens the door and long story short, he's doing everything he says <laughs> to not do. And then before you know it, he's like, don't you reach for that glove box. <laughs> don't you reach for that. You just stop. And he reaches for it and he's just looking at him as he does it. <laughs> don't you touch that gun. Don't you reach for that gun. And then before you know it, he's pulling out the gun and holding on him and the, the, the cops like, ah, you got me. <laughs> yeah, you're quick. So it's a, it's a joke though, but it's it's kind of explaining yeah. how. I mean, what the heck what do, do you want? expect cops to do? I mean, uh, you know, so that's that's where it's at. But it's, I, I here's the bottom line: is the revenue? What's really going to happen? Oh, Are right. sales going to fall off that. with the NFL? And the answer has already been yes, like it did the last couple of years. I have so, that video up here. It's kind of funny. The one you were just talking about. Key and, and Peel. Yeah, it's playing right now. All right, check this up, out, guys. Up. Get your hands back up. No, raise them up. Hands up, now. No, no, stop. <laughs> He's slowly I lifting no his movie. foot. Put your foot down. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Oh, easy does it. No, don't pick your other foot up. Put that down. Put, put your it, foot down. Put your foot down. Put down. There we go. No, do not pick the other one up. Put that one down. Put that one down. He's put slowly backing down. up. No, not put them both down. At the same. Okay, now you're just like walking. we're looking at the video stop box. Stop walking. Now. No walking. I want you to stop walking right now. Do not get near that car. Wait, get away from it. No, don't go near that car. Don't open that door. Do not open that door. Don't open it. Do not open the car door. <laughs> Look on his face. Don't you open that door. <laughs> Do not get in that car. Freeze. Your butt better not hit that seat. Your butt okay. better not hit that seat. This is like when you're dealing with your five-year-old kid. Get out of the car. Right <laughs> no, you don't. Don't you dare. Reach for that glove compartment. Don't reach for that glove compartment. Get away from the glove compartment. Get your hand away from the glove compartment. Don't you open it. Do not <laughs> grab that gun. Whatever you do, do, you better not grab that gun. You better not grab that gun. <laughs> do not pull that gun on me. Put that down. <laughs> pull that gun on me. Go, hey, put that down. Oh, he's Don't a goner. He's toast. Oh, no. Damn it. God damn uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's on his knees now. <laughs> Oh geez! All right, that, key that was, and peel standoff. That was that was season actually season three, pretty, episode thirteen. That was you guys brilliant. Check it out. That was brilliant. Mm. <laughs> oh my god! Don't you put your hand on that gun? Don't reach for that glove box. Uh, but you know, in all seriousness, like 
just give the cops a break. Maybe we should just go up to them and tell them how thankful we are for what they do every day. Because, I mean, mm-hmm. guys, them going to work could be the last day of their life. I mean, yes, any of us could be our last day. But these guys go out into war pretty much. Mm-hmm. I mean, imagine this. You go out and as a cop and you pull someone over and that person is wanted for a murder or that person has a warrant out for their arrest, um, you know, or even people that know that they're on probation, if they get pulled over and arrested, that means they go away for a very long time. And if that person doesn't want to go away for a long time, they're probably going to shoot you. Mm -hmm. You'd be texting, you're texting your wife like 16 times a day. Well, honey, I love you. Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, I, it, I've i watched videos that had me crying uh, of police officers that were ended, well, you know, because of one... To be fair, Baby Shark had you crying. Baby Shark mm, did have me crying. Baby but. Shark, Baby Shark, do, do, <laughs> uh, Way to take do, a do, serious do, moment shark, and make do, it do, ridiculous. Do, 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 do. Back baby to the shark. bottom line is, you baby know, shark. I predict this. If the NFL loses enough revenue, you're going to mysteriously see this thing go away. But you know who else is losing revenue right now? Oh, yeah. We got to talk about the N. Netflix. The Netflix. Netflix. Woohoo. I feel like that needs a sound effect. Netflix. Bye bye, Netflix. I'm broke as shit. Hey, that's actually true. (laughs) They're going to be broke because Netflix, guys, that is. That's like the talk of the day right now. Mm. Uh, it's the talk of the town. It's yeah, you sound like Sean Connery. We got fourteen-year-olds twerking on Netflix. On take that yeah, I got a lot to say about this. I mean, it ticks me off. Like, mm-hmm. what? Like, why don't you fill in being a lady and all? Okay. Why don't you fill in the world so, about something they probably already know? As you guys know, Netflix Cuties um, just premiered on Netflix like a few weeks ago so netflix cuties is a coming of age comedy drama so the film is actually a french film um it's written and directed by this french director i cannot pronounce her name (laughs) and um so the film stars actress uh, Fa- Fathia Youssef. So Fathia is a 14-year-old actress, and she portrays an 11-year-old girl whose name is Amy in this film. The French version of Amy, pronounced Amy. Amy, exactly, <laughs> um, yeah. Amy. <laughs> so Cute- Cuties, the movie depicts a young 11-year-old go- girl who becomes fascinated with her misbehaved neighbor, uh, Angelica. So Amy... Um, who comes from a religious home. So she becomes really fascinated with her secular friend because she's super religious. Um, And she becomes really fascinated with Angelica. And then Amy um, kind of pulled into this new secular culture. She becomes increasingly aware of her femininity. And then she encourages her new group of friends who have like a dance group, I guess. And then they start to perform, like, really sensual dance routines. And then, um, yeah, and they're trying to win this dance contest. And there's a lot of twerking and skimpy outfits and, yeah. Well, I remember when we were sitting down watching the news and they were talking about uh, this this movie or documentary. And uh, Mm -hmm. it was the images they showed from that. I haven't seen the film and I won't, but I saw it through, you know, watching the news and oh my God, dude, the stuff I saw, like these little children doing, I'm like, mm-hmm. what? There is zero excuse for that. Like there's no well, reason. zero. And then for another thing, this actress is a young girl. She's not like an 18 year old portraying a, an 11 or 14 year old girl. So this uh, Fathia, if I'm saying that, I'm probably butchering that, but she is a 14 year old actress portraying an even younger actress, an 11 year old who is twerking and um, doing really scandalous dance moves with a bunch of other young girls. And they're like wearing these little booty shorts and neon outfits and their butt cheeks are hanging out and they are straight up twerking and 
grabbing themselves inappropriately. Um, like, I just, I don't understand how a film like this is even legal because the actresses themselves, they're not 18 year olds. These are little girls. This is a 14 year old behaving in that way. Well, that, that, that just tells you where we are as a society. I mean, we're sexualizing children and normalizing pedophilia. And uh, it's just, and we got our son in the background. He's, yeah, that's awkward. It's that's really awkward. awkward but yeah, he's, he's like engaged. Emily said, we, we don't have a babysitter. So he's up here and watching a movie. So anyways, anyways. but yeah, children are so precious. And, and we're as adults, we're responsible to take care of them and protect them from all the all these things in the world trying to harm them. And I don't know, what's your view on it, Justin? 30 years ago, adults doing that wouldn't have been tolerated and the show would have been yanked off the air. Everyone would have been fired, you know, yeah. never to find work again kind of thing. This is how far we've sank as a society is now the envelope is being pressed for 12 year olds. And the thing is that the reality is, okay, so there's, there's going to be some people probably writing in or whatnot. It's, you know, one of our five viewers. That, um, <laughs> five, five of you. Wow, thank you. Wow, five of you. Wow. There's three of them here on the show. <laughs> <laughs> one future viewer on the floor there. <laughs> but seriously, uh, it's billed technically as a drama that reveals the bad, the misbehavior. And then at the end, there's a change of heart and a realization of that affirmation is not needed in that way for a young girl. But the way it's done is what's very akin to what some of you might know as testimony lust. Let me explain. It's kind of funny, actually. If you ever been to church and you heard that testimony and somebody went into their, like, drugs, drinking, and sex and lifestyle, and they talked about it for, like, 30 minutes, and you started thinking about it, and you're like, man, I think I kind of want to leave. Jesus and go do this for a while. <laughs> and then like in the last 30 seconds, they're like, mm. Oh, uh, and I found Jesus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah, glorify all Jesus. the bad stuff. So, pretty much. Yeah. So it's a lot of sensuality put out there to just, you know, sear your conscience and desensitize you. Yes. But what I think what bothers me the most about the cuties, this film is it's supposed to be like this big liberation movement for young girls. Like this is a coming of age. Like this is how you become a woman is to, put on a scandalous outfit, rebel against your, your parents, steal from your parents. There's this girl steals money from her mom, by the way. Of course. And of course. yeah, of course, why not? And then she runs around with her friends who are also disrespectful. So you're being res disrespectful to your parents and then you're running off with the bad kids and you're wearing almost nothing and shaking your body. Like how is that liberating for girls how is that something that young girls should should want to become and want to to strive for i think that's really what bothered me the most about this is this is that is somehow a liberating thing to do is to yeah. like wear nothing right mm. i i can't agree with you more it it's it's the opposite of what they think they're trying to achieve um, they're exploiting these girls for uh, there's an agenda behind it and they're hiding behind, uh, you know, this this justice that they think they're trying to portray uh, towards, you know, young girls. It's it's wicked. It's evil. As adults, we need to just put a stop to this crap. Enough is enough. I mean, we've heard about like California legalizing. They're pushing to legalize pedophilia. I mean, I don't know what that looks like fully, but. They've been kind They're of stepping towards redoing that. the laws. It's not technically really allowing it, but it's uh, it's sort of loosening the debt. What it is is it's loosening in California the um, age limits of if it's within 10 years, then it becomes a misdemeanor more or less instead of like a felony. Uh, it's And it honestly, it really is catching the penal code up with where society is at. But the problem in all of that is society is so far down the drain, especially in California. Sorry, California, but it's true. Mm -hmm. so it's so far down the drain that if we fully caught the penal code up to it, there would be a lot of legal things that really are not ever meant to be legal. Yeah. So what do you Absolutely. do? Do you, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's removing, it's kind of lessening the standards. And there is some good out of it in the thing in California, like if a 18 year old has a girlfriend that's a 16 year old, and they sleep together, he doesn't have to register as a sex offender for the rest of his life because that's 
Exactly. Kind of like the age but. of consent too. Like yes. in some states, it's it's lowered to like 17. And I haven't even heard that it's lowered to the age of 16. In some states, please correct me if I'm wrong, probably wrong, but whatever. But it's still, like there has to be a boundary somewhere. You have to put your foot down somewhere because you don't put your foot down, it's mm-hmm. going to get pushed further and further and further down the road. And pretty soon we're just going to have little strippers walking around with five-year-old, yeah, strippers. five-year-old strippers pretty much. So another thing I want to mention, no. so after after this aired, like back in, um, I don't know when it aired, but so um, hasn't back, been very long. <laughs> hasn't been very long, but net, Netflix shares have dropped 1.3% uh, following the streaming of Cuties, which I'm happy about. So I guess people, they're canceling their membership. Yeah, the and hashtag cancel Netflix. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. lowering the, the share cost. Um, also, since the premiering of the film, Netflix has removed the promotional image which showed the girls in the skimpy outfit. So that, like, you know, when Amy was sitting like this and she had her little, you know, and she was like this and she had, like, nothing on and this little neon outfit that was really um, provocative. So they did remove that image since. And then... Um, I guess Netflix tweeted an apology mm-hmm. on August 20th. So they said... What, what did they say? They said, we're, we're deeply sorry for the inappropriate artwork. That artwork. We, they call it artwork. Inappropriate artwork that like we why? used for cuties. It was not okay. Nor was it representative of this French film, which won an award French at film. Sundance. We now... Updated the pictures and description. So, yeah, like, it, I don't know if that's... Real clever we're, Netflix. We're yeah. sorry for the artwork. And then also this mm-hmm. film won an award. Yeah, do you see that little, little kick in the balls? Yeah. It's, it's sort of like when your mom catches you doing something and, you know, you say it back to her what she wants to hear in a real sarcastic way. It's like, yeah. we're sorry for this film that won an award at Sundance. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, it's a so joke. Sorry for this artwork that won an yeah, award. Yeah, this amazing yeah. masterpiece artwork <laughs> that you were offended by. Ha <laughs> ha. Thought you were gonna say something else after master. I think <laughs> this just shows like where, because I think Hollywood is just they always push things, but it sometimes it's just a reflection of culture, well, and that's really like what California mm-hmm. is right now. It's just it's falling apart economically, relationally. Um, everything's falling apart in California. Well, in the United States, I mean, we've just slowly allowed, all it takes is li- you introduce a little bit here, a little bit there. And before you know it, you're so far gone. Yeah, and it's so, working on yeah, and it's, it's completely acceptable. I mean, the way things are going, okay, if it continues down this path, I know it's hard to believe now maybe, but there could be a world where pedophiles are no longer a bad thing in the world. Like they're able to be with little children in 20, and it's, and it's okay. In 20 years, are we going to have the same conversation about bestiality and being like, you remember back when I wish we could just go back to when pedophilia was okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of things change in, you know, several years. I mean, I, who would ever thought this COVID thing would break out, you know? If I would have told someone a year ago, like the whole world was going to shut down and riots were going to erupt all over America, all the churches in the entire world would shut down uh, within a matter of weeks, they would literally laugh in your face and call you a crazy psycho. Mm. Yeah. Well, and now look at what's going on. So, but yeah. and then, It's called, um, so I want to point out that a lot of people are calling this film, um, Pedo bait is what they're calling cuties. <laughs> Pedo bait. Pretty much. Pedo bait. Pretty much. Then let me, and then this is so, mm. yeah. Let me see if I want to play this video or not. Yeah. I don't know yet. I haven't really. Is it a video of cuties? Mm, might we be probably don't go. want to. Nah, we don't need to see this. Plus, one. there's probably copyright stuff we have to deal well, with. We already, we already well, it's an official can't. trailer <laughs> of, of No, you cuties. can show a little yeah. bit of it if you're doing, if really? you're doing a report. Yeah. If you're reviewing it's it, it's a fair use act. Okay, I don't know so if I want to see it. But. Yeah, well, it, the trailer does it, so I'm watching it now. We can leave a link and on that. Let me yeah. turn. I'll I'll turn the volume up. We don't have to like watch anything, so the volume's up right now. 
So it's French. They're speaking French. So the girl is looking at the other girls dancing. And you know, she teaches them how to twerk pretty much. And then she comes back to school like this new and improved Amy and has like her midriff showing. Mm. Well, I think we got the point. She's running away. And yeah, and then at the end, like there's this big liberation movement and it's her on the stage twerking and <laughs> almost nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's so, 14. This actress is 14. Uh, well, it's art. Yeah, it's, it's art. this and masterpiece is art. <laughs> Interesting parallel is that in the uh, very early 1900s, check this out, none of us were around, obviously, but the norm for the time when swimming uh, for female mm. was you wore something that covered a lot of your body. Yeah. Oh, nowadays. And the French, oh. France was the place that they came out with the bikini. And it was so scandalous at the time that they literally had to get a prostitute to be a model for it. Jeez. They did. Oh, and it's scandalous now. It's basically Bikinis are like, okay, so you know the bathing suits are bad when your underwear has more covering than your (laughs) bathing suits do. This this is a strong reality. I'm not even kidding. Like my underwear covers more of your stuff than Bathing suits. How does that make sense? Like mm-hmm. they straight up tiny little triangles. That's what you get. You get three <laughs> little triangles. That's all you get. Sorry, ladies. Even three being naked triangles. covers more than that's a baby, your bikini. Baby. <laughs> like how 75 is that? covers more than that. You're not you even I mean? swimming. You're like you. Seriously, you might <laughs> as well be naked. You really might as well be naked. Three at that quarters point. and some dental floss to get you to that place. <laughs> Just like wear stickers or something, or I don't know. Like you, you know when you fold up those little pieces of paper or dollar bills into the little football game. Oh my god, uh, that's, that's about the equivalent. Don't give the designers any Sorry, ideas. Jim. So yeah, the American bikini. That's probably going to be the next big thing. Done like, coming to you from the producers paper of Cuties. Football bikini. Anywho, yeah. So but yeah, you're right. You're right on the money. It's. I always thought it was interesting. I mean, this has been said a million times. Your but underwear covers more than your... I am more comfortable wearing my underwear than a freaking bikini that I get from Target. Uh, that does not mean she wears her underwear in public. That means it's not okay. <laughs> well, while bikini. swimming, well, yeah. Well, technically, uh, when you uh, get old, I don't like to like swim with everything. Exposed. Anyways, but I just... I don't... It's so, it's so embarrassing, too. Like, I... How do you even tell somebody like, hey, lady, um, you need to get more clothes on and they're everything's hanging out. It's so it's so uncomfortable even for a like a woman to be next to another woman where they're pretty much naked. Well, if you do, you're a misogynist. I'm a misogynist. <laughs> I might as well be a man. I'm a, I don't know. So anyways, that was our take on the cuties drama that's going on right now but we we we're totally opposed to it and uh we are considering canceling our netflix um i I think we're going to i yeah i just had this moment for a week where i felt like i was i felt like i was hearing from god to just you know i'm working on my budget anyway right no car that helps but i feel like i heard from god (laughs) don't have a car so uh what else can go here (laughs) so uh, i finished i finished uh blitz on uh the the show the rain which is a pretty good show i've like, seen it all uh Dane we've seen it oh Land. the rain with um yeah the queen of scots if you haven't seen it watch it it's very oh, interesting i have seen it uh, that's something else actually this is sort of like weather meets um dystopian future meets walking dead but anyway i finished that up and i just felt like it was time to you know chuck netflix because there's been other there's been other things netflix has been involved with that are kind of similar so it's obviously progressing down the path. wrong path yeah and mm. basically once again it seems like we're drifting into follow the cabal territory here but it feels like netflix is one of the executives that's on board with whatever the agenda is and the agenda is to spread just this like completely perverted sexual orientation in every way possible including Pervert children everything everything that we were taught as children like they're deep 
and structurizing everything mm -hmm. and yeah. valuing everything and recreating a new network like where where family values are taken out and that our values are solely based on cultural values yeah yeah hmm. yeah so it's Netflix, really hot shame up on in you. this attic right now it's so hot it's super i'm sweating well that's because i've had my air condition off because uh, we had you fall no setting in and i thought hey let me here. save some money and turn the air condition <laughs> off and we come up here we're like bikini on. oh my god <laughs> the irony uh <laughs> So <laughs> I saw this. Uh, you get up, you're wearing bikini bottoms. At the end of the <laughs> show. <laughs> it's like, hey, straight up my underwear, my <laughs> granny panties. Just like, you never know. My All adult, right. Adult adult diaper. Like, <laughs> my adult. Yeah. Looks like shirts. I'm what serious. else do we have uh, to talk about? We so another thing that we do need to talk about, and I apologize because I don't know enough about this. And I know there's a lot of people in our family and we have friends in those regions right now. So I apologize if we get things incorrect. Please correct us if we're wrong. Oh, they will. Oh, yeah, they will. <laughs> they will. <laughs> Just up and up and they will. But yeah. we do, we do want to mention that there's, you know, the fires in California in Oregon. So... Um, right Washington. now, yeah, so there, I'm just going to read Washington what I State. have, my little spiel yeah, here. Washington. So there's an unprecedented fire season wreaking havoc across western U.S., so California, Oregon, Washington, uh, with nearly 100 major wildfires tearing across multiple states, those three states pretty much, and air quality is plummeting. So it's getting harder for these people to breathe, even if there's not like a fire kind of in their city. Yeah, so, um, so far... The whole season, at least 24 people have died. Um, with there, There's a ton of people missing beyond that. Um, over 3,000 homes um, and entire neighbor, neighborhoods have been astroy, destroyed um, during the season so far. So, um, Oregon, right now, uh, they just declared a state of emergency. Golly, man. Yeah, um, and half a million people... Um, were under evacuation orders. I guess what happened is there was two fires and they were like threatening to merge into one. So over a half a million people had to evacuate. In Oregon? Yep. And then so far, um, uh, more than one million acres have been destroyed. Burned. Wow. So, so the, yeah. the, you know, the first thing you might be hoping for is that the fire just completely takes out Portland. But... So please no. remember. No. Just you're going to get us shut down. Well, That's funny. the thing that could happen, what if this displaces everyone into the central United States? It was in on the West Coast. How would that affect things? That would be interesting. I, I, so <laughs> I heard that a lot of these fires are being started like it's an arson. Basically, awesome. there's groups of no, people yeah. that are starting yes. these fires. And what was that place in Washington? Um, Pal so Palapia? The only or thing I could really find. Washington? I, didn't I forgot how to too pronounce deep it. deep into the subject. But the only thing I could find. Um, so there was a police report of a 36-year-old man in Pulalup. 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 Washington. Um, and he was re uh, recently arrested on September 9th. Um, and he was a suspect in setting a fire in the median on uh, SR, I guess, State Route 167. And um, the Washington patrol officer, he said that they don't exactly have evidence that it was linked to Antifa. But I guess he's a suspect but they couldn't really pin it on Antifa. So they are catching people that are trying to start fires and they could be a part of this well, group, yeah. but they don't have, First I guess. the Reich tag. Now this. Right. They don't have. Yeah. Well, you got to think about it. Oregon and evidence. Washington state yeah. are the like most rainiest places in the United States. So for yeah. wildfires to just break out like California, it's a major victory for fire. It seems like it's very strategic. Like, People are doing this on purpose, right? So. Like Washington and Oregon. I don't, I don't know enough about like the history and um, fire seasons. It's in shocking that area. to me. I, um, but yeah, I mean, it does. I mean, you, you, when you think Washington, I think Seattle, and I think it's like cloudy and rainy, except for like mm -hmm. the month of October, <laughs> and that's yeah. pretty much it. Yeah. So I mean. Who who really knows? I mean, there could be larcenists. Um, there could be people linked to Antifa, or dare I say, Black Lives Matter. But 
Um, yeah, so there are people that are being arrested for trying to set fires. Mm. And this gentleman was trying to start a fire on State Route 167 in Puwallop. That's it. I Poo-lallop. think that's right. Uh, yeah, so I who knows? I think a lot of stuff's going to come forward from this. But I know the in California, like one of the, it might even be the main fire started from a baby gender re- reveal party where they used oh, the little wow. uh-huh. and it exploded and what exploded? lit all the gra- Baby you dinner. know like the cannon thing that shoots out the confetti or whatever and oh, yeah. or the smoke and oh by the way i just want to point ours. out that um baby gender reveal parties are no longer acceptable because we don't really know what the gender of the baby is going to be until they're of age to decide what gender they oh, want to be. Which now so is five. gender reveal <laughs> parties are not really a thing anymore, and we should not mm. really be participating in them. Oh, I man. can't believe people are burdened with a gender at all. BS. I don't buy into it. I won't back down. I don't care. That's I'm so not going to be politically like, correct. We can't celebrate that. We can't even be proud of the fact we have a son or be proud of the fact we have a daughter. Like, there's no, like, mm-hmm. why can't we celebrate the gender of our children? Well, why is that so well, offensive? It's because if, if you have any godly beliefs or practices, you're not allowed to have joy. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's just suck the joy and everything and fun out of life. Like, let's, let's, nothing um, wrong with that. Let's sum it all up to this. Basically, anything that God does that's good, let's do the opposite of it. Mm-hmm. And that's what, that's the exact thing that, so anything that's good and God created it that way, let's do the freaking opposite of what God's doing yeah. because we don't want God in our country. We don't want God in this world. Let's not build it up. Let's, let's, tear it let's down. destroy gonna, the I'm current order. Let's burn everything. Yeah. Someone's going to take a clip of that and then <laughs> yeah. use it. <laughs> let's destroy I'm the speaking, order. Well, yeah. we have five viewers. Three of them are here now. I think that the other mm. two are going to be pretty easy to pinpoint <laughs> which one did that. So because they're in case we have downstairs. so little viewers and subscribers that I almost know the people that unsubscribe from the channel. Yes. <laughs> it's like, hey, Bill. He just, yeah, they're so yeah. emotional. We're like, ah, oh, man, I said something bad to this By person, the way, so Bill is not the right name of a person. What, you know, yeah. what you're saying about really the enemy just doing the opposite is it's interesting because how uncreative is that? Like if you were to, yes, I do my research, so I've seen pictures of this, like yeah. the inside of like a church of satan what have you yeah it's got the it looks like a church but with an upside down cross and a little more red yeah yeah it's where's like you're the, not recreating where, anything you're just decreate you're just taking the you're same taking everything thing god did and, and make it you're, a you're counterfeit it. yeah like you're a taking the photo and clicking 180 degree you know and mm-hmm. flipping it upside yeah. down and that's yeah, everything like, that you do so yeah it's like god created sex for marriage and it's holy and good Oh, let's just make it to where everybody just has sex with everything. Everybody yeah. gets to. Yeah, yeah, do what you want. And that's that's what. Well, um, men and women are meant to get married by God. Well, let's have men and men and women and women. <laughs> We're original. We're independent free thinkers and we should be supported. In. <laughs> well, now I'm definitely being shut down. Yeah. Uh. But real for quick, sure. we just we're just praying for our friends and our family out in the West Coast area right now. We really do care about you, and we want to make sure you're safe. That if there's anything that we can do to help you right now, please let us know. Um, but just know that we are thinking of you and um, praying for you, and we want to help you any way that yeah. we can. Yeah, we may not agree with all the politics and stuff going on, and we may laugh at certain things, but we definitely care as human beings. We totally care about, you know, there's so many people out there losing their homes Mm -hmm. and their, you know, properties. And, you know, some people, I I hope no one's passed away as a result of the fire, but think of the animals. um, The most recent fires, I think eight people have passed away, but the whole season in that area that the season for the, the fire, um, I don't know what time frame it is, but uh, 24 people have died. So for so far, 3000 people have been displaced from their homes. And right now you have half a million uh, people evacuated. Well, I, I heard something. I don't know if this is true. So, yeah, listeners, if it's not true, let me know. But um, I did hear or see something uh, on Facebook 
<laughs> that's where you get a lot of great information that are facts. Uh, <laughs> they, so I get all these facts. they said that Just Mexico kidding. sent a lot of firefighters uh, to help mm. fight the fires in Oregon. I don't know. I don't California. know. California. I'm don't seeing know uh, drug channel. <laughs> yeah, right. That's all I said. No, that's cool, man. I mean, if that's true and they're actually doing that, that's mm-hmm. we appreciate that. Um, well, did you know that Mexican water puts out fires twice as much than American water? Really? Yeah. The extra bacteria in it really just quenches it. <laughs> <laughs> Way to sound real smart. I drink the water there. Uh, I wouldn't survive. Well, that's because that's only because they have different that, yeah. kinds oh, of bacteria. Like you can grow up drinking the water there and you're fine. Yeah. You're probably I found healthier. an article. So there, I guess there are um, some firefighters that did come from Mexico. So a sister city in Mexico has sent volunteer firefighters hmm. to help with cool. the fires in Oregon. Um, let me see if I can find. Well, 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 America, where are you now? Yeah. Look at this. We had to come Guana up. Bail you out. Once again, uh, for the first time. <laughs> Guado, Guanajado? Guanajado? Guadalajara? No, Guanajado. Uh, G-U-A-N-A. J-U-A-T-O. Guanajato? <laughs> I'm sorry, but we do appreciate your help. Um, thank you so much for sending volunteers out Dang. that way. I think Guanajuato to, would mean to bad shit again. white man. <laughs> no, that's not. So it's a sister city is what, what they are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> crickets. Yeah, yeah, where's those dang crickets? Sorry. sorry. Uh, I'm not as good as Charlie Bartha. He makes the crickets look good. Sparkly, he makes the crickets. He wears them in his hair. We Charlie, you make the crickets look good. That was going to be the reveal for this. Uh, I would read the tweet that the mayor um posted, but it's in Spanish, so well, just read it in Spanish. Premier, I'll tell you what it means. Del equipo de (laughs) (laughs) premier, (laughs) knows the okay, okay, I'm done. Uh, That was a rough translation. Uh, That was the best translation. Hashtag pray for Ashland. Wait, I don't hey, even. Is yeah. That's a gang sign that you just threw. Ashland. Out. Ashland. Ashland. Ash. Ashland. Oh. So Ashland, it, it's a it's a town in southern southern Oregon. So I got that Was part of his tweet. Hashtag pray for Ashland. Okay, Ashland. I got yeah. that part. Well, let's pray that God uses this to just make some changes and for people's lives in a positive way. Yeah, I mean anything catastrophic, positive yeah, comes from totally. it. So when you're down on your luck like that, your your ears are open, your eyes are more open though. You know what do you might want to say? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, and so for all we know, it could be this could be a huge prophetic indicator of like a Holy Spirit wildfire going through California. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, who knows? I I'm gonna try to uh, find a good charity or something that's legit that mm-hmm. is helping the fire situation in California and Oregon and stuff. And yeah. if I find one that's legit and not like a scam or whatever, I'll put a link below in the description for you guys to uh, support them and what's going on. I think the Justin Ocean Foundation. Is yeah, right. Yeah, your Ocean own Water your, uh, podcast. Yeah. yeah, subscribe to this podcast if you like EDM music. It's awesome, Justin Ocean. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a video before we end this <laughs> podcast. There's a video that's hilarious that I... I saw it on Facebook and there's a guy. Can you pull it up, Emily? I yeah, sent I'm finding it. It's in your messenger. I sent it in your Facebook messenger. What's mm-hmm. up? And uh, it's downtime it's silence. It's the weirdest thing it. I've ever seen. No, okay, so let me no sum it up. Idea. This video is of a, a Chinese man that figured out how to create a fire in his mouth using sawdust. So he's like stuffing sawdust into his mouth i mean you know sawdust is very flammable right like it can be that takes a lot of spare re- time to figure that out all right i got the video you got the video there. all right can you flip the thing to where we can thursday see thursday off and i'm gonna do go put there we go can you flip the thing you guys yep. gotta check so this out i'll put this up on the super long video so i'm gonna go like put in it in the middle. middle he pretty much eats a bunch of sawdust here show this us. is so weird he's eating sawdust mm-hmm. is it flipping there he is. He's doing it upside down. Oh. Oh, that was the- <laughs> Dude, he's got that all up in his mouth. So what this guy's doing right now, apparently you can start fires with sawdust. So Yeah, this, it's flammable. This guy is eating 
a bunch of so well not eating. He's down. putting a bunch of sawdust in it's his mouth up. right now, and he's like puffing air. Look at this. Look, look. And it actually starts to listen to him breathing. Smoke. Oh, I, he does, he's not using existing fire to get it. No, in his no, mouth. no. He's just starting from scratch. Watch this straight from. That's when I'm eating sugar and stuff. That's how I. This is how you start fires. How you start the grill in the backyard. <laughs> That's how I start how the Jason grill. Is. That's how I barbecue. Bunch of sawdust. <laughs> Get together, man. Look, look at, at this. Dad. Look, look. <laughs> Dude. He's just. And that's why I'm going to Electric Forest this year. Holy cow, man. Hmm. He's shooting fire out of his mouth. Yeah, yeah. Look at the smoke. Yeah, it's about. Just is he shoving more? Added. Okay, now he's picking up the fan. <laughs> and he's, he's fanning his ear. He's flip his ear. <laughs> yeah, he's, see, he's fanning his, his mouth what? full of sawdust. He's totally fanning air through his ear. I think maybe we're being had. You know, what if the sawdust is really whoa? That's fire. That's. Holy cow, Apparently, dude. Apparently, it has taken him... <laughs> now this guy's lighting a cigarette it's with it. It's taken him six years to master this technique. Oh, it's a lady. It's not a mm -hmm. lady. Is a lady doing yeah. it? No, it's a guy doing it, but this lady's lighting her cigarette. Holy cow, dude. That'd be one ranky cigarette. So, is his mouth like... Oh, dude. It's like the crumbs you get at the end of your cereal, you know, when you're pouring it in. Mm-hmm. Golly, man, that's trippy. It's a really colorful fan. How, I mean, how does air get through your ear? Uh, normally it doesn't. Wow. Well, way know. to go, Chinese man. I'm going to start blow. doing that here soon because it's so hot up in here. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm going to try that. Maybe I'll do that in the next podcast uh, when I get. All right. All Ancient right. fire breathing sawdust, yeah. man. Yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. That's a good way to end the show. That's that is a good way to end the show. And uh we're gonna do that indeed. We're at the hour mark, a little bit over, but uh yeah, guys, thank you for tuning in to the podcast. And like I always say, I love you guys. You're amazing, even if you don't agree with me. Uh you're amazing. Love you. Stay awesome. Do good things. Do good things. Guys, let's try to make this world a better place. 2020 doesn't have to end in, well, I was going to say in, in flames, flames, but uh, that's a poor choice of words. Uh, but yeah, we guys, can we can do better than this. We can do yeah. better than this. Let's say no to the pedophile movement that's trying to come on this earth and say no to all these riots and chaos and let's try to love one another our fellow brother and sister Amen. our neighbors our police officers first responders Second our teachers responders. let's love the world that's what we're supposed to do not judge one another and so we can have our different opinions we can voice our different opinions but we can do it in a peaceful way and to that i'm going to say good night mm -hmm. good day whenever you're watching this good and tune in for the next podcast. Love you guys. Adios. Bye. Thanks for listening to the This Could Make Us Famous podcast. Want to help make someone famous? Have a story to share? Get in touch with us at facebook.com slash this could make us famous. And be sure to subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss a single episode.